What's up guys, Carolina Jackpot time, coming at you on Wednesday afternoon. Man, the uh, coaching carousel is definitely spinning out of control the past few days. There have been changes <laughs> at the top um, in leadership of a lot of college football programs and that effect just trickles on down. It affects so many other teams, so many schools, so many positions, so many guys, and so many lives. God, but I'm going to tell you something that I heard Monday, I think it was. If you've been watching the Carolina Jackpot channel like you're supposed to be doing, uh, you would know on Sunday afternoon that Lincoln Riley took the head coaching job at the University of Southern California, leaving open his position at uh, Oklahoma State. I believe I'm the first one to have broken that news here on the channel. In fact, I know I was. Anyway, Oklahoma, of course, uh, not going to go long without uh, a head coach, right? Uh, it's a big-time program, uh, probably the best program in the uh, Big 12 uh, right now. Let's be going to the uh, Southeast Conference within the next couple of years, along with Texas. And there's been some names bandied about. Right now, former head coach Bob Stoops is acting as the interim head coach. Still supposedly close to the program. He's recruiting uh, to keep the program going. Well, that's a good thing. But it's kind of weird uh, to me that uh, he would be doing that. Um, I mean, like, you quit. So I, I don't understand why you're going back to do that. But anyway, that's uh, neither here nor there. Shane Beamer, head coach uh, of the South Carolina Gamecocks, who just finished up the regular season with a 6-6 six and six record. Of course, this past Saturday night, an abysmal, embarrassing blowout loss. Uh, to hated rival Clemson, 30 to zero. And I'm seeing rumors uh, that Shane Beamer may be possibly a candidate, may be courted, may be in discussion with uh, to be the next head coach at Oklahoma. And I, and I saw that, so I said that he may be going to Oklahoma, Carolina Jackpot. And I was like, as what football coach? <laughs> I mean, whoa! Come on now. Um, let's uh, let, let's pull the reins in just a little bit here. Uh, Oklahoma, are, are you seriously considering this? What are you doing? I mean, why? And for, first of all, let me I'll give you a little bit of backstory. When Shane Beamer was hired as the head coach at South Carolina, I'm going to go on ahead and tell you right now, I didn't like the hire. Uh, people will give me hell on this channel in the comments section still uh, when I talk about Shane Beamer and how uh, how much I like him and how good of a job he's doing or give him any kind of praise whatsoever. They're like, well, I remember you didn't want him. I hated him. I've said on multiple videos uh, subsequent to that reaction initially that I had gotten on board the Shane Beamer train, that I was going to support the guy as uh, you know, long as he didn't do stupid boneheaded things as head coach and didn't make stupid boneheaded decisions. I was going to support him in the rebuilding project here at South Carolina. And I think so far he's done an okay job. So those people that, you know, put those in the comment section just proves to me that either, number one, uh, you don't watch the videos uh, all the way through, or number two, you, you just uh, have a bad memory. Uh, or you just read read the thumbnails and you don't listen to the video. Which is, uh, that's not the way it works. I like Shane Beamer. I really do. And don't get it twisted. But did, if Oklahoma actually offers him the head coaching position, and make no mistake about it, with what he's making at South Carolina versus what Oklahoma could afford to pay this guy to be the head coach, he'll leave. I mean, he'd be, he's gone. He will be gone if that happens. Because South, right now he's the, he's the lowest paid SEC uh, head football coach is even lower, uh, as far as I know, than uh, from the head coach at Vanderbilt, which I, I might have to put a pin in that because I'm not sure that Vanderbilt's coach or not I'm sure that Vanderbilt's athletic department puts those salaries out there because it's a private institution. I don't think they have to make that uh, stuff public knowledge. But from all accounts, he's the lowest paid coach in the SEC. Um, 
that Oklahoma would be able to give him a substantial raise over what South Carolina could give him based on his performance. So he'd be gone. I don't care how much he tells you that he he wants to be here. He, he loves it here. I like it in South Carolina. This is where I want to raise my family. I want to see my son playing high school football uh, in the Columbia area. That's all coach speak. It's coach speak. You know what speaks louder than coach speak? This old stuff right here. This, this old stuff colored like this right chair. That's what speaks louder than coach speak. But Oklahoma, if they if they offer him that position, they hire him as head football coach, that is the dumbest, most boneheaded decision that I have ever seen uh, in coaching uh, hires. And it will have it will be the dumbest that I've ever seen. Period. I mean, I mean, what do you, why would you even entertain that thought? Why would you entertain that thought? Why? Because he, he coached there. Uh, uh, he was an assistant head coach, which is, to me, just a title so they can give him a little bit higher of a salary. And, and he was a tight ends coach. He was a tight ends coach, and he washed uniforms for a couple of years uh, under Lincoln Riley. And then, he, you know, he left and came to South Carolina. And nothing that he's done at South Carolina, nothing that he has done would prove to me, and it certainly should not prove to anyone in Oklahoma, that he is capable of leading an elite college football program. And, and look, I'm not so narrow-minded and narrow-sided. It may seem that way at times because I do have a lot of blind homerism for the Gamecocks, but I'm smart enough to know that Oklahoma has a much better job than South Carolina. It's a higher paying job than South Carolina. It's a higher profile job than South Carolina. And right now, for as many more years as it's in the Big 12, whether that be you know, one more year, two more years, whatever it is, it's a much easier job than South Carolina. It is. It's easier to recruit to. Nothing that he's done at South Carolina proves to me that he would be able to handle that high of a level of job. And don't get to say when I say that's an easier job, it's an easier place to win at a high level at. You would, I mean, it's much easier to make it to the college football playoffs at Oklahoma than at South Carolina, right? Uh, number one, uh, because of the schedule. Number two, uh, because of the level of people you're able to bring there. But still, at, at that point, he's done nothing here to prove that he's ready to take that job on or that responsibility. We just finished up the year six and six. We finished six and six, okay? It is what it is. And, and, and a lot of Gamecock fans on all the message boards and Facebook and stuff like that, you know, they they, they you know they get a, a, a bee in their bonnet when I, you know, get down on the team like, look, look our record six and six. We're six and six. You know, I mean, we won two games last year. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, we won two games last year against an all-SEC schedule. We only played 12 games. We only played 10 games, excuse me. This year's six and six record, I think, is a little bit, it's just a little bit skewed, okay? A little bit skewed. It's not a it's not a Guinness Stout six and six, okay? This is more of a watered down Milwaukee's best light six and six. Okay? You know, you had a blowout loss over an FCS team that was horrible. You beat two non-power five teams in East Carolina and Troy, okay, but East Carolina better than Troy. You beat them on the road, which that that's kind of, that's a quality win. Game shouldn't have been as close as it was. Uh, the Troy win to me was not a quality win. The win over Vanderbilt, not a quality win. So that leaves us with four right there that are not quality wins, and then East Carolina, which is, is somewhat of a quality win, somewhat questionable. Uh, the wins over Tennessee and Florida, or Tennessee and Auburn, they were what they were. I mean, people can sit here all day long and tell me, well, Florida had the flu, and they, you know, that, uh, they, they didn't want to be there because, you know, they won't play for Dan Bullen. And it's, look, I played high school football for four years, and I played in rec league for what, three, four years before that. There was never one single game during my uh, illustrious career that I didn't want to be there, that I did not want to play. I didn't want to get on the field and do my best, okay? And when you get to the college level, I would think that that's even uh, bolstered even more. I don't think for one second, and I don't buy into that theory of he didn't want to be there. We just didn't want to be there. These kids are competitors. They're passionate. 
They're here, they're at your school on scholarship for a reason, because they're good football players, because they are committed. I don't think that any of these people don't want to be there. I think that Florida just got beat by a better team that night. Perhaps not the more talented team, but the team that had a better game plan and played better. We can just leave it at that. The same thing happened when they played Auburn. They were probably more talented than South Carolina. South Carolina played better, so they won. Those were good wins. But aside from that, he's not done anything here to make you think he can run the Oklahoma program. Not at the level that they want it ran at. They want to be competing for the college football playoff every year. They want to be playing, compete for conference championship. When they go to the SEC, they're going to expect to be able to compete for the conference championship there, whether they're in the West with Alabama or whoever, or whether we're in the pod system or whether we're in the whatever system it is, whether they take all 16 teams and just put them in one big pool. They're going to expect to be near the top of it and competing and recruiting at a high level. And to me, he's just not proven that he's that guy yet. He may become that guy. He may become that guy. He may become that guy soon. It may take him 10 years to become that guy. He may never become that guy. But to me, hiring him would be the dumbest move that you could possibly make. And the only other name that I've really seen service that has a lot of uh, validity to it, and my friends over in the uh, shitty uh, hillbilly corner of the upstate, the Taters are going to be upset. They're already upset. It's Brent Venables. And Brent Venables, defensive coordinator at Clemson, obviously enjoyed a, a bit of success as defensive coordinator at Oklahoma. Before that, in my opinion, is hands down a better candidate than Shane Beamer. Hands down. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Number one, this guy's been offered multiple head coaching positions he's turned down to stay at Clemson. Uh, they say it's because... Um, uh, but uh, his family's all here and they, they want to go to school. I, I don't really necessarily buy into that. I buy into the fact that uh, he's probably making as much money at Clemson to do as much work. He's not going to turn down the Oklahoma money. He's an Oklahoma guy. He, he, he ain't going to turn that down. Okay? If he gets offered that job, Tater, he's going. And I'm sorry that he's just going. That's just the reality of the situation. And the reason I say is that he's hands down a better hire than Beamer is because uh, the guy has coached at a very high level. And I don't mean a power five level. He's coached teams that are playoff caliber at a championship level. And much as, it, you know, I, I, I hate to just say that. I mean, facts are facts. And the Taters have been playoff level slash championship level for quite a few Turn years right. now. Turn left onto Barrington Cross. This guy has been right in the middle of that. And his defenses have been uh, one of the major cogs in that wheel. He, he has played or he has competed in games and played them. Maybe he did at one time. I don't know. He has competed on the big stage multiple times and had success multiple times. That means a lot. I mean, it really means a lot. And to me, that's a no-brainer. That's who you hire. Uh, and I'm not just saying that, but you, you, you just want to get him out of Clemson until he does. Well, you know, it, it is what it is. And Brent Venables didn't give South Carolina a goose egg on Saturday night, okay? South Carolina gave South Carolina a goose egg Saturday night. The abysmal play calling from Marcus Satterfield, the uh, lack of uh, blocking uh, from a line coached by the Fat Arn Anderson, both of whom I hope uh, are shown the pink slip at some point in time within the next few weeks. Other reason why South Carolina was not able to successfully move the ball against Clemson. And also, here's another one too, while we're on that same tangent about Shane Beamer, Oklahoma, you really want the guy to coach your team? to head up your program who just got shut out 30 to nothing by his own rival, by his hated arch rival, the biggest game of the year that you had everything riding on as far as recruiting in the state. And I don't mean everything riding on it. I mean, because you are still going to be able to pull in recruits, but it would have went a long way toward giving you a lot of giving your program and restoring a lot of credibility to this program. If you not only if if you not just had won the game, if you had had made it a really competitive game, a fun to watch game, a game they're like wow. I mean, they really uh, played their ass off. They might have lost, but man, they're they're for real and, and they're on the come up. 
and you know, and, and then Tater be like, you know, I mean, uh, South Carolina gave us everything they had. I mean, you know, mad respect to them for that 27 24 loss. No, you go out, you shit to bed, you lose 30 to nothing. 30 to nothing. 30 to nothing. I got to Clemson team, it's not even very good. So, why in the hell would you offer that man your head coaching position? You wouldn't. Somebody in Oklahoma pump the brakes, step back just a minute. Let's look over the candidate pool once again, and then let's reevaluate. I'll see y'all later. Appreciate you. Peace, and I'm out. Go Gamecocks, and still go Coach Beamer. I believe in you, and one day, buddy, you may be ready for that Oklahoma job. Ah, ah, ah.